Hi everybody, I'm the community manager of the Ida War 3 and today we have a special guest. Please introduce yourself. Well, now is the time to represent myself. Alright, okay guys, glad to be here. I'm the product manager of the Ida War 3 game and my task is to control deadlines. Sometimes we promise to do something during the live streaming or on our social media and it's not a good thing when we fail to take our promises, so I try to prevent this from happening. I think you fully realize how displeasing it is when there is a deadline but nothing is done. This is just one aspect of my job. Additionally, I ensure that there's clarity within our team and everyone knows their responsibilities. Now let's have a look at the video that has been prepared by our core testers. This video clearly demonstrates how good and efficient heroes are. The beholder is on your screen. It surveillances the map. Now that his ability has been activated, his side range has increased by four cells, giving the Confederation player an advantage. However, the Resistance player remains unaware that he has been revealed. The Confederation player opts to deploy bombers to strike the group units. Despite the Resistance player's attempt to respond, it proves futile. This showcases the effective use of the Beholder unit. Acting as a proficient scout, it guides the bombers to their targets, maximizing damage output. Now let's move on to the next episode. Here, the encounter involves Jaguars and Chameleons set up against multiple Zeus's backed up by the ship. Note how Vertex fighters come into battle and they need just one salvo to annihilate Leviathan. What's the reason for this? The Beholder, let's look at it. The Beholder applied the active ability precisely when Vertex fighters approached. The Beholder closes in and uses the active ability and all units suffer debuff within an area. So, Vertex fighters deal increased damage to enemy units. Why? The Beholder scanned the units, detected their vulnerabilities and communicated the info to the rest of the team. Now, Vertex pilots are well aware of Leviathan's weak spots and they just eliminated. Moreover, the Chameleon's fog was revealed, allowing the Confederation units to easily locate and target the enemy. It's yet one more way how to effectively use the new hero. But the Wolverine does an excellent job on the ground as well. Two versus two fight, ancestors land map, the first engagement to win the large container. The Confederation side has typhoons, hammers, and two servers, heroes. The setup is pretty common for the Confederation, so there's nothing new. The resistance has two Wolverines along with various shooters. Now, pay attention to what these two Wolverines are doing. Yes, they couldn't seize the container because the resistance lacked infantrymen and armored vehicles. Nevertheless, the number of enemies smashed solely by two heroes astonishes. They took out servers, typhoons, and a bunch of hammers. As a result, the Confederation's attempt to capture the container led to losses and it didn't pay up at all. They lost as much as they had received from the container. Well, Confederation players overuse typhoons. But you'll never know what an adversary gonna play with. The enemy might have produced the Wasp unit or the Wolverine. To counter the Wasp, more typhoons are needed. In the case of the Wolverine, hammers are handy. Basically, it's not an easy choice, for sure. The next important part is how to unlock new heroes. You need to get 1000 hero blueprints. They can be obtained from various sources. 
The easy one is to take advantage of the offer, store 1000 hero blueprints immediately, and unlock a hero. The hard working way is to get them from free sources. Ad boxes have some common hero blueprints available with a certain chance of getting any hero blueprint. Consequently, there are blueprints in all sources from which you can get rewards. In tournaments, they are in the line of rewards. In daily rewards, there are blueprints too. For instance, uh, well, it's, I guess, well, 22 common hero blueprints. So, containers for tokens, please remember, they are useful too, and they really come to the rescue as well. Use them to get those blueprints. In short, all the places where you used to find blueprints for the old heroes now also provide blueprints for the new ones too. I'd like to address a common question that players often ask. They have some trust issues claiming the game stats are wrong and the resistance players increase their win rate, winning over weak confederation guys. Well, it's all about trust. You have the right to say we'll lie, but we don't, for sure. However, there's no way how you can check it. If you do believe us, that's great. We transparent, and if I'm not mistaken, we've already demonstrated some graphs during live streaming. We have our own system that analyzes all the game events. The data gathered is used to tweak the game balance. Maybe you'll be stubborn seeing the stats are wrong, but we don't have other stats, guys. And the developers are certain that the stats are 100% correct. Well, the stats are undoubtedly correct, but you may interpret it slightly differently. The overall balance is good and we know it very well. But if you take, for example, the Steel League, the figures might vary. If we take only players with a win rate about 75%, the Confederation players win more often. For example, this data shows the Confederation wins a bit more often. But keep in mind that if we tweak the game to make it ideally balanced for 200 players, we're gonna ruin the balance for 1000 players and they'll quit. Some leagues are highly likely to have some balance issues, and we know it, we're aware of it, but we've already made the balance as good as it could be. I'll repeat, if we do change the game for the minority of players, the majority will suffer and the league will cease to exist. When can we expect the release of the second and third tier heroes? We're currently in the process of developing them, but it's gonna take some time. While we have prototypes for these heroes, there's still plenty of work ahead of us before they're ready for release. As new heroes continue to be released, our work persists. We've developed a three-dimensional model for the second tier hero. While I'll keep the hero identity under wraps, it's bound to be a, you know guys, formidable one. I'm confident it will evoke even greater excitement among players than Defy Than and Solaris combined. Picture that. In addition, we're in the final stages of approving concepts and mechanics for other heroes. When will you release a flag for the moon? Currently, we're pondering the question. We have a few other flags in the queue. We've just introduced around 10 new flags and we've heard from players who are eager to see theirs. We intend to address this, but not immediately, as we're anticipating further updates on flags. You know, we hesitate to update the flags every month. Let's wait and see what unfolds. There's a chance that countries might update their flag designs or new countries might emerge. Who knows? 
transfer game progress between Android and iOS. We won't do that. And the main reason for this is that accounts are often stolen, the feature is misused to log into someone's account and then relink the progress, hence the player who started an account won't have access to it. Why have you diminished the armor of Cyclone? The Cyclone unit is designed for scouting, but players often use it for attacking enemy bases and harassing enemy troops, and with such an armor it lacked a Zeus light gun to be a maxed out flying tank that eliminates everything on the battlefield. When will we see hidden unit stats? We're currently in the process of redesigning the workshop and we're making good progress. One of the key improvements we're implementing is the display of stats using graphical bars rather than just numbers. This change aims to enhance the workshop's visual appeal and make it easier for players to understand their stats at a glance. Additionally, this update will unveil hidden stats such as the duration of the shield or a chameleon fog and other intriguing upgrades that players may not have been aware of. It looks like we're on track to complete these enhancements, I guess within the year. Now is the time to say goodbye, stay tuned for the upcoming episodes, Commanders.